This quick tip is going to teach you how to create a motion trail effect in Adobe After Effects using shape layers and the echo effect. It's really simple, really straightforward. Let's dive in. So I have a scene with a single ball and three keyframes kind of going in a figure eight pattern. And I want to create some motion trails on this. And so it's really simple to do. I'm simply going to go to effect, time, echo. So by default, if we go ahead and RAM preview that, you'll see the echo is creating a copy of the main layer. I've applied to a shape layer. And we have only a couple of dials to work with here. And the main one that you're gonna to wanna to look at is the number of echoes and the echo time. So if we add the number of echoes, take the number of echoes to 100, you're gonna see, well, then it creates 100 copies. And so that top line echo time is saying how much it's going to offset. So right now it's negative 0.033, which is way too slow because it's it's dragging way out. So if we take that to negative 0.001 and hit enter, you're gonna see that tighten up considerably almost to look like a single shape layer, which is really uh, the effect that we want. So you're gonna be able to affect the, the length of this tail by the number of echoes once you set your echo time to something really, really, really small. So we're telling it to, to bunch up together. Uh, we want a really, really small delay. So if we say, well, that trail is a bit long, so we cut it in half to 50, and then you'll see it gets a little bit shorter. So if we ran preview, we'll see that kind of motion trail effect, which if you don't want to use motion blur is kind of a nice way to get that to kind of get that smearing effect. Here I have uh, three shapes, all parented to a null object in the middle of the scene. And the null object is just rotating with a really simple uh, ease in, ease out. And I have three different size balls. I have the setting the same, 100 echoes. And I'm actually animating the echo time. And we can, we'll talk about that here in a moment. But you can see the way that this effect looks on smaller objects and larger objects. On larger objects, I think it looks pretty good. It looks okay. Um, it's really, in my view, eye-catching on the absolutely smallest ball in the scene here where you get that smear that, that really looks like kind of a perfect circle. Um, since I have it rotating uh, a perfect 360 degrees because I have all three shape layers just parented to this one null that's sitting in the middle of the scene. Um, I'll go ahead and turn that on. All parented to this null that's just rotating. Now the other thing we can do that's really nice is you might not wanna have um, the echo on all the time, right? When it stops here at the top, I want the echo at zero and I want it to reach that negative 0 0.001 at kind of the apex of the speed, right? So if the rotation if the rotation property is maxing its speed right here, this is its absolute quickest point, well then I want it to reach its, its maximum length right here. And then when it gets back to the top, I've animated it back to zero. Um, so that's really useful, right? And that's just as simple as, you know, let's go to the absolute quickest part of this. If we look at my graph editor here and look at the speed graph, I've just basically got kind of two ease in, ease outs, kind of fast through the middle, slow on the sides, fast through the middle. We can, we can, we can animate our echo time to kind of max when it reaches its maximum speed. And when it's at its uh, kind of slower speed, we just take it to zero. So we'll say just ramp up that smear, that kind of smear frame right there, and then it kind of goes slow through here. So I'm gonna take it back to zero. Then it goes quick through the center again. I'll copy and paste that keyframe, take it back to 0 0.001, negative 0 0.001, and then back to zero to complete the loop. And that might be something you have to play with, uh, but as far as I've found, this is really the easiest way to create a really clean looking kind of echo trail or motion trail or smear effect when you want that kind of stretch looking frame uh, within the concept of squ squash and stretch. Uh, and the echo effector is really simple. You just determine the number of echoes, that echo time, and then animating either the number of echoes or the echo time 
is going to give you a lot of control over that. Here it is like on a simple bounce where it reaches its absolute peak speed. So I add a little bit of that motion trail. Uh, but I think this is probably the most helpful example where you can think about whether the element is rotating or it's darting across the screen. This works really, really well for shape layers. And I'm also pleased to see that I have a gradient overlay on each of these shape layers, how I'm driving these gradients. And it really, the echo effect picks it up uh, really nicely. And it kind of makes it look like one piece, which is, which is really helpful. Um, so that is the echo effect, incredibly useful uh, and something that I am using more and more with every project. Thanks for watching.